Hi, as you may know, I was a judge in the recent Renesis RX Micro design contest, and it was one of the biggest design contests in industry history. Over $100,000 in prize money uh, from Renesis and various partners, a whole bunch of partners were involved. Almost everyone who entered, I think, won a prize. It was absolutely incredible. And uh, Renesis gave away uh, hundreds of these RX 62N uh, micro development boards to enter the contest with and a whole bunch of people did just that and there were dozens of brilliant absolutely brilliant entries uh, and there were I wasn't the only judge uh, there was um, Maury Wright who's a fellow blogger uh, Kent Lohman who actually uh, designed this board and a bunch of other uh, judges they tallied all the scores together and they announced the winners at the uh, ESC the embedded systems conference a couple of weeks ago and uh, I thought I'd do a very quick video of just highlighting the top uh, three places because I think they were really good examples of how you can actually enter and win these design contests so if you plan on entering future design contests stick around might have a few hints for you about how to do very well and possibly win one of these industry design contests so let's go through them the top three Winners for the RX Micro Design Contest. See ya! Okay, let's start out by taking a look at the third place winner, Matt Pratt, with the Brewbot. Now, this one is an absolute beauty. It's basically uh, brewing your own beer at home, and he uses the Renesis RX board to control the whole thing. Uh, basically in terms of motor control and web uh, interface to control it and operating system and the whole thing like that which we'll go into now he uh, ticks all the boxes which you need to win these design contests he's got an excellent video it's nice and clear it's uh, concise it's got uh, audio as well um, it shows the operation of the thing the construction all sorts of stuff so you've got to have a good video to be really in the running for these contests and he's got that and he's got the uh, even though the schematic uh, isn't much at all um, but he's got the bill of materials he's got the zip file with the source code so it's all there he's met all the conditions of the contest and he's got excellent documentation now here it is it's a PDF file and this is the uh, basic it starts out with a photo of the device there it is there's the uh, Renesis RX board down there controlling it's got a whole bunch of uh, stainless steel um, contraptions and uh, shoots for the um, all sorts of stuff and it's all automated uh, motor control and all that sort of stuff from the Renesis RX series board now the thing with these you always in the design contest you always get a big build like this somebody builds something big and impressive looking and you immediately see it and you go wow look at this you know how can this guy not win and uh, well it's true you're gonna if you build something impressive like this you're really gonna be right up there straight away but it's not all about just uh, a fabulous construction if this if the Renesis RX series board down here controlling this thing only uh, flashed a few LEDs and turned a few motors and was basically used as a PLD uh, uh, sorry a, um, a programmable logic controller a PLC then it wouldn't have been very impressive at all because this is an electronics design contest so a really big impressive build like this with lots of wood and lots of metal and motors and things that turn and do stuff that's fantastic but if you don't do much on the electronics um, or and or software side then uh, really you can be uh, left out you can not win you may not even place and he just scraped into third place with this thing um, it was a pretty solid third third place actually he didn't just scrape in but um, it was an excellent effort because he had pretty much consistent across the board the video and the documentation now let's take a look at it he's got a table of contents about this document uh, it's 23 odd pages long fantastic it's detailed he's got the background of why he's doing it um, he's got the objectives of his thing it's well written it's uh, well written in English which is a big deal some people just 
have terrible documentation skills and it comes across very poorly, but not in this case. It's excellent. Safety he's mentioned. He goes into the design of it, the uh, servos and the solenoids used. Um, further on down here, he details the construction, the materials used, <laughs> all sorts of stuff like that. And then he's got a, uh, a uh, descriptive photo of the all sorts of, I don't even, what's a grist bag? I have mash stirrer. I have no idea. These are all uh, uh, terms used for um, a mash motor, used for uh, brewing beer. But uh, he's gone to the effort to label all this stuff, and that really comes across, uh, across quite well. And there's more detailed photos. Photos are easy to do. When you're documenting your project, make sure you photograph it, and you, uh, you know, photos are easy to to add, they're simple, you just take a photo, a golden rule of any documentation, be it at work or when you're entering contests like this, just snap a photo, a picture tells a thousand words, it really does. And there's more detailed uh, photos of uh, his complete build, it's very impressive. There's the uh, hopper system, that uh, I assume you put the uh, required elements for the beer in there and it uh, tips them out at the required time. Fantastic. But uh, it's not rocket science, really. A controller that just controls um, a beer bot like this is not overly uh, complicated at all. As I said, it's just a PLC. There's his Veraboard uh, build down the bottom with just the extra driver circuitry on it. Uh, the Renesis RX board does most of the thing, but I like how he went to a lot of trouble to build it. It's got a Perspex panel on the front, the wood construction's very nice, and all that sort of stuff. So, as I said, it's not all about the uh, just the act of actually brewing beer. You can do that with any PLC, but what he's done in this case, is that he's actually used um, a uh, the free Artos. Um, he's used a real-time operating system and developed an entire web server for this thing, so he can control it um, via the web. And it also integrates with uh, some existing um, open source uh, software. So, and he's actually uh, re-releasing that back to the community, so people can develop on this thing. So, that is a really excellent way to gain uh, valuable points in a contest like this is uh, use all the features of the development board you've been given. This case, it was a classic, it's got Ethernet, it comes with web server, it was begging, any application for this contest was just begging to have the web server enabled. So that's what he's done and he's used a real-time operating system and the uh, GNU tool chain, it's fantastic. And there is his, um, this is the uh, brew target, I think, is the software, that um, existing software, which he has interfaced to and can control his um, uh, brew mechanism from. So it's fantastic, and he gives that back. And here's another big bonus point, graphs. Personally, when I'm judging a contest like this, if I see that you've measured the performance of this thing, graphs are brilliant. You earn huge points for doing that. It shows you you're uh, dedicated to the project. You're not just slapping it together to put it in there. It shows that you really uh, care about the design. You've taken the time to measure its performance and optimize it and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, it's really quite nice. You can actually see how it uh, overshoots there at the start. He didn't use a PID algorithm in this case, but th there's the oscillation around the target temperature and there's the uh, ramp up as it... Um, as it brews the beer, I guess. Fantastic. So, and then he talks about uh, design improvements as well. So, there you go. It's got pretty much everything, including a conclusion and acknowledgements. And that is pretty much uh, perfect textbook documentation for winning a contest like this. And that's why he got a solid third place. Well done. Let's take a look at second place now. Jingzi Zhang, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, with the RX ECG Silverlight web server for ECG. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, but it's an excellent project uh, for several reasons. And let's check it out. Basically, what it involves is it involves uh, using the Renesis RX development board to interface to a uh, and ECG and electrocardiogram monitoring uh, system 
that uh, basically there's just a, a bunch of um, amplifiers on the input uh, fed into ADCs, and that's pretty much it. So it's a uh, pretty uh, simplistic front end, but he's using the um, Sega RTOS and the Sega network stack as well to uh, web enable this thing. And of course, uh, Sega is one of the Renesis RX uh, partners, and you get bonus points for using the uh, the partner tools which come with the board. So he scored points there straight away. And the other thing is, it scored big points for originality because how many people would do an EC a web based ECG monitoring system, let alone one using the uh, using the Microsoft Silverlight web server and really it's also a good demonstration of the Silverlight web server which nobody else um, even uh, thought of doing it's one of the more obscure applications so it scored big points there but um, and on the technical merit side it also scored pretty big points not so much for the electronics side of it but for the software side requiring to interface with the real-time operating system the web server and then uh, going into the silverlight um, uh, aspect of it as well and it's a pretty useful device so they they were uh, three of the categories that scored high in originality technical merit usefulness but unfortunately it uh, didn't score as high as a third place brewbot in for me anyway in terms of um, the documentation while he's got two videos here they're actually are uh, quite poor videos and let's take a look at them I made the ability to uh, analyze the front end for ECG amplifier and data center here and here he talks about the board, but it's a very uh, uninteresting, monotonous kind of um, video, uh, audio um, voiceover. So, whereas compare that with the Brewbot, and where he was actually in the video himself, actually talking about the project. So, that gained big points. So, the videos weren't very impressive, and they weren't very informative, unfortunately. And uh, same with the other one down here. It's just... Um, basically just documenting how he, um, you know, how to use the program, which isn't really that exciting at all, I've got to say. Um, so I wasn't thrilled by the videos, but he made up for it in the uh, written documentation, which he's duplicated on the main page here. But we can actually go to the... Uh, Actually, we'll go to the schematic. He's also produced the schematic, so he met all the terms and conditions uh, to provide the schematic, the bill of materials, and all that sort of stuff once again. So it's all there. But if you go to his documentation, which is also a similar length to the other one, 22 pages, there you go. Um, so that goes to show that uh, length of documentation and the in-depth part of it uh, matters as well. Abstract, in introduction, system descriptions. Ah. Oh, all sorts of stuff, performance and test, it's all there. So let's take a quick look uh, through. It talks about uh, Silverlight. What is it? It's a Microsoft development platform, etc. I didn't know much about it. I learned something from actually reading this documentation. I went on and had a look at Silverlight and exactly what it was and what it did. Um, and that's great. He's using something that nobody else used. He's got some nice, pretty uh, system block diagrams here of how it uses and how it accesses through the ports and uh, and how it can be used for doctors using a uh, just a web browser on in a remote location or something like that so it's really terrific and he's got uh, the system description down here cross domain boundary policy server talks all about that fantastic detailed stuff and all the ports he used it's all there he uh, it looks like he's, I don't know whether or not he did that or he's taken that from uh, somewhere else. He probably did that himself um, about how all the uh, uh, system requests and things like that uh, work based on the client and the task and the, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. So that's really detailed and quite nice how the data service works. The uh, analog front end, uh, that's clearly taken from the analog. That little schematic there is cut and pasted from the data sheet another big tip take data sheets for your parts that you're using a full absolutely chock full of beautiful uh, diagrams and internal descriptions make use of them 
like he has here and he's just added basically just here's the board and these are the lines I'm using that interfaces to this chip it's great it's exactly what you need it's easy to document stuff like that once again he's uh, taken the uh, a, a screen capture from the data sheet in terms of how it all works so it, there's some really uh, easy documentation there on offer that you can just steal from the data sheets and it looks impressive there's nothing wrong with doing that more system diagrams of how the buffering works oh so detailed so this documentation um, written documentation I would rate above the uh, above the third place ghetto for the brew bot but the video let it down otherwise he would have scored perfect marks on the uh, documentation and the video combined which is all in one now this I really love he really shows the hardware construction and the dead bug uh, construction technique take a look at that he's flipped the chip upside down this little uh, tiny 0.5 millimeter pin pitch thing and wired individual stuff that just I just went that is brilliant when I first thing I saw that I thought he's getting bonus points for doing that a neat little hardware implementation nice little hack I love it and oh, there's a more detailed up close photo isn't it brilliant so that scored huge bonus points he's got the schematic there it is performance and test again he's talking about uh, he's got some screenshots a whole bunch of stuff how it all works pretty much everything you need to judge this thing he's left nothing out whatsoever and that's why it uh, just snuck into uh, second place in fact there's not much at all between uh, third second and first in fact there's only about 0.4 points they basically all scored pretty much identically um, and there was not much separating them whatsoever and that's how you win a design contest or in this case come a nice solid second and that brings us to our first place winner and it's Thomas Aldred with the Nimble Sig 3 RF analyzer congratulations Thomas now this is a classic example of a project that is so highly technically refined that it's almost I hate to say it's almost impossible to beat in these sort of contests really the only time you're going to stand a chance is if you have such an incredibly novel entry that it might score very highly on one of the obscure judging categories like say uh, cost effectiveness or something like that um, which most of the uh, projects in this contest actually really didn't score anywhere on the cost effectiveness because they all used the same development board the RX development board so really that was a bit of a nothing category in terms of this uh, contest I thought anyway um, other contests where you might have to just use a single chip or something like that then really uh, that's when cost effectiveness cost effectiveness can really a category like that can really come into it but uh, the first time I heard the name nimble sig I thought aha I've heard of this before and sure enough I remembered that he had entered this project before in a circuit seller design contest back in 2006 actually it was the luminary micro design Stellaris 2006 contest and here it is um, that was the nimble sig um, that was the original nimble sig and then he's got had the nimble sig 2 I believe somewhere and this is the now the nimble sig 3 he's been refining this since at least 2006 so like you know five or six years this project's been refined and this is why it is so darn good now the original design he's actually the nimble sig 3 here um, that was in circuit seller that one actually used a um, that used an NXP semiconductor micro so what he's done is he's retooled this uh, project to use the uh, well the technically superior Renesis RX uh, series micro to enter this contest and bingo that's exactly what he's done he just he still called it the nimble sig 3 but here it is it's there's nothing stopping you from entering a highly refined project you've been working on for years and if you've been working on it for years you're really um, gonna uh, 
stand a very good chance of winning these things and beating the other people who just see the contest and go, oh, well, I'm going to enter this. I've got two months to enter and they've only got two months to work on their project or something. You've been working on it for five years. Who's going to win? It's easy. But it's not because he's been working on it for so long. It's an awesome, awesome project. Um, it's a complete RF analyzer from 200 kilohertz to 200 megahertz. And there's lots of really magic uh, analog stuff in here. So let's uh, take a quick look at it, shall we? First up, he's got um, some excellent videos. Let's listen to them. Welcome to the uh, NimbleSig 3 RF analyzer demonstration video. We have put this video together to try and demonstrate uh, some of the features of the NimbleSig 3 RF analyzer. This RF analyzer is, consists of a dual output RF signal generator that can be operated over the frequency range of 200 kilohertz to 200 megahertz. Either generator can be uh, operated. So there you go. He goes into uh, detail with a very good voiceover of uh, how it all works. And then he's got separate videos down here for how uh, the user interface works. Check out the complete graphical user interface he's refined for this thing. It really is quite remarkable. And you actually boot it up and it says, welcome to the Nimble Sig 3. And there's the user interface. Fantastic stuff really. Um, and he's got the required documentation. So let's take a look at the uh, PDF document, shall we? Let's close down that one and load up this Nimble Sig 3. And here it is. It's got excellent photos. Check, it, check out the build of it. It's just a nice build as well. It looks like he's put a ton of effort into this and he has because he's been spending years building and refining this thing. And once again, look at the documentation, 58 pages of it. Woohoo! Right? It's got absolutely everything you could possibly need. Let's look at the build inside. He's got his own uh, custom, there's the uh, LCD board he's using off the shelf, uh, touchscreen LCD controller um, type micro board. Um, and there's the uh, Renesis RX series development board in the bottom of the box and he's rejigged it. He's used a uh, prototyping board on top there which plugs into the two user headers. He's the only one that actually used uh, that board. I, I believe it was, um, it was, I think it was offered as part of the uh, contest but um, he's the only one who used that that I actually saw and it's pretty uh, simple interface So, but he's redone all of the software and the whole thing he shows how he uh, uses the RX um, RDK as the controller, and to talk to all his individual uh, boards, he's got the um, you know the active mixers and the RF gain and the phase detectors and the ah, oh, it's awesome and the signal DDS signal generators, and he just goes into detail after detail and there's some of the uh, RF wiring in there, some of the coax wiring, brilliant. Let's take a look at some of the further build. And there's the front panel. He's gone to a lot of effort to build that. The user interface, of course, we're talking about. And uh, it's just, <laughs> there is no shortage of, how can you not be impressed by this project? I mean, it, it actually plots, look at this, it actually plots the response. Of, yeah. It's just an awesome project. He's uh, developed a, a complete, a serious bit of test gear here that um, seriously, you could buy this thing. Um, you know, you would, some people would spend many thousands of dollars buying something um, of this magnitude, of uh, this product. And it's all there. And there's his uh, custom board, the Nimble Sig uh, 3, and it's in a custom um, alloy, a custom machined alloy case check it check out that for the shielding ah oh, absolutely brilliant and there's the and then he goes into the complete schematics and the uh there's the dds i think that's no that's his phase magnitude detector board so all these modules um are all custom made and really there's no way that you can beat that in a given contest time frame you can't the only way you're going to get it is if you've been developing this for years and you already had those modules and he retooled it to use the Renesis uh, RX board and that's just fantastic. So really, that's a uh, there's that um, there's that uh, header 
there's that uh, expansion board which went on top of the RX series board, which is quite nice. It's got various uh, footprints, and it's just using that as just an interface controller, um, as just an interface uh, board, really. So pretty simplistic use, but a classic example of using and leveraging an existing project to win a design contest. So if you want to know how to win, enter rejig your existing project and you're going to be hard to beat. Thanks. See ya.